So in med school and also before med school, I always wonder like how are there questions in med school, like the exams, the tests. I want to know what's, what a question is like. So in this video today, I'm going to be going over some questions that we use in orthopedic surgery to study for our boards. So these are questions that uh, can be very challenging. You have to know your information, you have to know your anatomy, you have to know your basic science, pathology, and the different specialties, oncology, pediatric, trauma, spine surgery, foot and ankle, hand surgery. You have to know all of this before your exam. For those who are unaware, I just graduated from residency a, a few weeks ago and I'm taking my boards to become a board certified orthopedic surgeon next week. And this is one of the tools that we use to prepare for the board. Also, in addition to a review course that we went to, you know, a few months ago to prepare for it's a week we spent in the classroom, 10, 11 hours a day just studying and preparing for this exam. So, like I said, before I was in med school, I was like, man, I, I, I just want to know, like, I want to see what kind of tests are you guys taking? What kind of questions? How are the questions kind of structured? So hopefully this sheds some light in terms of what the tests um, are like, what kind of questions are they asking, are they hard questions, are they easy questions, and who knows, maybe some of you guys will get the answer correct as I'm going through them. So we're gonna go through a few questions that I'm currently doing to study for my boards. So this is one of the websites that we use here to study as residents and also to prepare for our boards, it's called OrthoBullets. And once you log in, you, there are 6,500 questions, so a lot of questions that are available. And you can break down the, by specialty. Say for instance, you're doing a trauma rotation. You can just do only trauma questions or you can only do spine, recon, which is hip and knee replacements, hand surgery, pathology, which is oncology, pediatrics, anatomy, basic science. So these are all the things that we're tested on as residents and also for our boards. So we'll do a quick 10 questions here and I'll talk through kind of the questions as I'm going through them. So usually for most questions, there's gonna be a long question stem. You can see this question stem is pretty long and then answer choices. For us as residents and also for our boards, the answers can be anywhere between five answers and 10 answers. So it's important to eliminate by process of elimination and go through each one of them. So the first thing I do is read the last sentence because all of this may not be necessary. You may not even need this information or they may give you these images here and you may not even need these images. So it's important to just read the last sentence first. What is the best next step? So then I go to the beginning of it. 65 year old woman, she has thigh pain for three years after her total hip. She has a history of adenocarcinoma so looking at this x-ray, this is the end of her total hip here, and she has this lesion here. So even though she has a history of adenocarcinoma, I would probably still just make sure that this is not something else or a primary malignancy. So I wouldn't observe it. I wouldn't just treat it with chemotherapy without knowing what it is. You have to know what it is before you fix it. Same thing goes with this one. So it only leaves, uh, leaves us with two and the best thing to do is to biopsy this and see what it is first what is the recommended treatment so 38 year old man has a history of pain in his left wrist so looking at this uh, MRI here this is the uh, lunate and he's had this for six months so I'll go through and eliminate these uh, these answers here. It doesn't have any significant collapse of that bone there. So usually I just try to eliminate the ones that really don't make sense right off the bat. Implant arthroplasty is probably not the right answer. Eliminate excision. So those just, there's <laughs> some answers that are just going to not make any sense. And it's, the best thing to do is just go ahead and eliminate those. And you can see 
as you're going through the remaining answers why some may or may not make sense. The radial shortening osteotomy, that's possible because look how long this radius is compared to that ona there. I wouldn't do a total wrist arthrodesis in a young patient and also he doesn't have much arthritis. I'm sorry, eliminate that. I'll probably do a radial shortening osteotomy for this. Which of the muscles is expected to be the last to recover function during the ensuing months? So short leg cast, she has a patient has a complete foot drop, compression of the perineal nerve. So the muscles that are supplied by the perineal nerve, this is an anatomy question. EHL, perineal longus. Flexor digitorum longus extensor. So this is in the flexor portion of the foot here. It's not the right answer. And a lot of times you can think back to things that you saw in the hospital or things that you read or saw. And I usually see patients that have their EHL, they can flicker their toe. So I would think that that is probably not the right answer. Perineal longus is in the lateral side of the uh, leg here. So I'm going to go with tib ant if you have a foot drop. That's the EHL. Okay. Now I'll go back and review that. And when you're reviewing the questions and answer, just make sure that you understand why each of these is not the right answer. Because they can switch this question around and ask it in a totally different way, but have the same exact answers here. So... What does the error on the MRI scan indicate? So this is the MRI of the chest here. That's a 38 year old weightlifter. And usually there's a lot of associations in medicine. So if you start to pick up these trends that you know the weightlifters get biceps tendon tears and also they tear their pec. So this is probably the uh, pectoralis major that he tore here. Usually, it doesn't look like an abscess. I told you it's a weight lifter, although it can be. He has this track kind of going through the superficial portion of his skin here. So, I'm going to go with peg, peg major. A mutation of what protein results in this disorder? Five-year-old boy delayed walking and difficulty climbing stairs has a positive Gower sign. So a lot of associations in medicine. This is associated with uh, Duchenne's um, palsy here. So it's usually a mutation of the, the protein dystrophin, not collagen one, or neurofibromin. Failure of postlateral coronal corner repair or reconstruction of the knee may be associated with what? So, just going through these answers, if you have an ACL reconstruction, that's not going to lead to a failure of your posterolateral corner. Although, if you miss a posterolateral corner repair or injury, I'm sorry, this can lead to failure of your ACL reconstruction. It's not PCL, not medial collateral ligament. I'm going to go with a varus malalignment. Which of the following statements is most likely incorrect regarding this injury? 22 year old male injures his ankle while playing hockey. He's splinted and then seeing your office. So I'm going to look at his x rays here. There's a fracture up here, fracture here, fracture in the back, so this is a... Okay. So they asked him for the incorrect answer. And just don't get tripped up on this. This can kind of make you miss the answer if you don't read this. You want to find the one that's incorrect. 
So going to, for the easy ones, fibril link must be restored. Yes, that's true. There are increased peak ta tibial tailor contact stresses, if not anatomically reduced, that's true. The PITFL is disrupted. Looking at the back of the ankle here as possible. If it were isolated, the amount of articular surface of the posterior mount does not require operative intervention. That's possible to eliminate that. Rotational stiffness of the syndesmosis is greater with fixation of the posterior mount compared to placing a transsyndesmotic. True, that's true. So I'm going to go with two. The layer of cartilage, articular cartilage that the arrow points to is characterized by superficial kind of layer, resting zone of the uh, cartilage, this histological slide here. So off the bat, I know that it has a low proteoglycan level. So any of the ones that say high, I'm gonna eliminate that. It's not intermediate. So, and I know it has a lot of collagen in that superficial layer, so. What's the most likely etiology for revision TKA in this patient? 75 year old male, revision, total knee 15 years ago at the index procedure. He used a standard size cemented posterior cruciate sacrificing components with a size 13 cross link polyethylene liner. So usually it's aseptic loosening that's that far out, kind of early on, it's infection. Usually not instability that far out. Periprosthetic fracture, most likely not. Arthrofibrosis is usually earlier on. So this is just a, you have to know it or you don't know it. The last one, which of the following is to be true. Just remember this, they, they're asking about what is true. 39 year old man falls off the bicycle and complains of neck pain, tingling in his fingers. So he has this ankylose spine here as a fracture there. And sometimes they give you stuff that you may not need. So I'm not sure if you need this chest x right here. So I know this is ankylosis spondylitis based off that extra cervical spine. His uh, HLA B27 should be positive. That is positive in patients with AS. Oh, okay, so that almost tricked me also. So just remember that they're asking me which one is true. So that is true. Examination reveals short neck, low posterior hairline, limited neck motion, usually in patients with um, some type of genetic defect. Most likely not that. Japanese descent, they're trying to get you to think of um, DISH as another kind of similar picture to AS. Same thing with this, fluent ossification, rheumatoid factor, so that's rheumatoid arthritis. So the answer is uh, two. Okay. So that's it, let's see what I got. So I missed uh, one, one question. So I'll go back and review these answers here, questions, make sure I understand all the concepts, make sure I understand every single answer and why it's wrong, why the correct answer is correct and why the incorrect answers are incorrect, so. All right, so I hope that gave you some idea of what it's like to take some questions as a resident, orthopedic surgery resident, and in terms of what you should know kind of coming out of your training. But my goal is to get all of the questions correct. Sometimes that's not the, the way it goes and I go back and I review the things that I miss, also review the things that I got correct so I can keep that and learn it and store it away for future kind of questions. This is Dr. Webb, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't wanna miss them. We'll see you next time.